We live in a world that's always looking for greater results. Uh, we're always looking for better ways and quicker and faster. Everybody now wants everything quick, fast, and in a hurry. And it doesn't matter. And it's sad to say we are looking in all the wrong places. Many of us are looking to Washington. Many of us are looking to Raleigh. Some of us are looking downtown City Hall. There are others who are looking to Hollywood. Others who are watching TV. And others who are watching all the talk show hosts. And always giving us uh, ways and steps and means that we can have a better life. But I've come to remind you this morning is that the greatest book ever written is still the way, the truth, and the life. And that is the word of God. Most of us are really, really satisfied. As long as things are going okay, I'm doing fine. I really don't need anything. But when trouble knocks on our door, then here we come. And I come to remind somebody here today that if you're going to be the family and if you're going to be the husband and the wife and the family that the Lord Jesus has ordained from the scripture, you got to do it God's way. Now I need to remind you again today, I don't come as an authority on anything, but I come as a servant of the true and living God, only with the word of God that he has placed on my heart. I just come this morning to remind you, to let you know that out of all the isms and the schisms and out of all of the ways of the world, God's way is still the best way. As a matter of fact, God's way is the only way because I tried everything else and it just does not seem to work. So I come to remind you today that if you follow his way, he has a remedy for everything. It doesn't matter whether you come from. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you were reared. If you do it God's way, he'll bless your life today. So this serious business of a marriage, it starts with a man and a woman that God ordained to be the head and the lead of the family. And when Genesis 2 talks about when a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, they shall become one flesh. And that one flesh will have that love, that commitment, that they love one another. They are committed to one another. And now Solomon brings us today, uh, this text brings us, except the Lord build the house, then the labor is in vain. And except the, uh, he keep the city, the watchman walketh, that is in vain. So I come to remind somebody here today, if, if, if you want the God's way, and if you want the best way to work on your behalf, do it his way. Allow him to have residence. And not only residence, but presidents in your house. Allow him to have first place in your marriage. Allow him to have a place in your life that he is always there to lead God and to direct. It is our responsibility to include and to never exclude him. It is our responsibility to always be mindful that we've got to trust him and we got to depend on him and we got to know if we do it his way, he will make everything all right. The best protection that a man and a woman can have to safeguard your marriage is to have him as the head of your life. It's to have him as a center of your marriage and to have him that you know that you're going to depend on him for everything. And the reason we get in trouble today is because we are human being depending on human flesh. And flesh going to always be flesh. Flesh going to always stroke flesh. Flesh doesn't care about right and wrong. Flesh just cares about what I can get that satisfy me as I am. But I come by to tell you that's not God's way. We've got to keep this flesh under subjection. And we've got to do it his way. Marriages, as somebody said, might be made in heaven, but they got to be worked out on earth. You got to work at it every day of your life. You got to watch. You got to pray. You got to trust him. You got to depend on him. You don't have enough knowledge. You don't have enough willpower. You don't have enough stability to make it on your own. You need the love of a God that will watch out for you, that will protect you, that will keep you, that will make a way for you even when you don't know how you're going to make it. He's that kind of friend. 
But I come to tell somebody here this morning that the watchman, if the watchman even that's watching this city is not doing it in God's way, that, that his work is in vain. Time will come and, and carry us to different places in life. But if we're going to get the fulfilling reward of the covenant that we have made, the vow that we made, uh, the benefits that we will receive, we must do it God's way. Total security will be found only in Jesus Christ. And unless God remains the center and effort of our labor, our work is in vain. He must be the one that we must follow his direction. Because Hebrews 13 and 5 promised us, God promised us that he will never leave us or will he forsake us.